Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming. I've got a purchase video as well as an opening video. We got some free stuff from somebody, but uh, the stuff I'm going to show is um, some pretty cool boxes. In fact, you guys have already seen this one, this Jungle Booster Long Pack box, which is the equivalent of two booster boxes, but I got some more of these. And then I've got some decent PSA cards, and we'll, you know, we'll just go through everything. And I got something that I'm really excited about. In fact, you might even. I'm not even going to show the actual item in this video, but I'll show you where you can see a picture of it. But the reason I put the jungle in the background is because I also have... I picked up the fossil from the same guy. I saw that he had one of these fossil boxes opened, and I was like, hey man, do you have one of those sealed? And he said, yeah, I do. And he sold it to me for the same price, $3,400. It had this uh, issue right there, but... I saw where he actually had another one of the jungles sealed, $3,600, and I paid $34. He sold one for $33.50 to someone else and $34 to me. So, I mean, honestly, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, you're basically getting two boxes, but it's sealed in a different type of packaging that uh, you, you rarely see. And then, ironically, someone else reached out to me, Pokemon Radar, if you guys know him from Instagram. And you may not be able to see it. Let's scoot these over a little bit. It actually says base. Pokemon base set booster long pack. Wizards of the Coast quantity 72. So I thought that was really neat. And if you notice it's 61.58, 61.59. And then the jungle is actually a lower one. This is 61.38. So this one was probably printed before that base set. But either way, it was really cool uh, to pick up all three of the original ones. This one had the Walmart sticker on it still. Walmart SC, maybe that's South Carolina, 1658 package, one of one. Summer, Terry, so Terry Summer. 1210, 1999. I mean, that was getting. That was definitely after the release of Jungle, maybe even Fossil. I can't, I know it released, I know all three of those released in 1999, and base set was like January of 99. But, so there they are. So we've got the big, you know, the very first three sets all in 72 count, sealed, original long pack cases. I really like that. Like, I may even go for, I don't know if there's cases past that, but if there is, I might be trying to get them myself. Uh, next up, I'm going to show you some PSA cards, and there's still some really cool stuff to come. All right, this all come from Bone Digger. Uh, I haven't even went through this stuff, to be honest with you. Um, he sent this to me a couple weeks back, but I just set it off to the side. These aren't even English, like Japanese or something, so I'll probably send them Troll and Toad to sell. We got some, he said most of these were packed fresh, so he, he probably planned on sending them to PSA. In fact, he bought this, he bought a base set booster pack from me, at the Hartford Regionals Collectors event, and he pulled this out of a pack right there on camera, and he, he did it. It was like a live Instagram kind of deal. So this one's definitely going to PSA. Um, I don't know about these other ones. I still got to check them out, but if they're as good as he says they are, they'll probably end up going. Next up, he sent some other PSA cards. Got an Expedition 10. I just sold the 9 recently. There's a Fossil Mew. Of course, on the English side, this was printed as a promo, never come out in Fossil. The only set you could even get a new end under Wizards of the Coast, I think, was Expedition, which there was a few versions. The number 55, and I think it was 19, and there's the first edition Articuno. The, this hair across, I think, had a chip in the corner or something. Didn't mention that, but it's like a $5 card, so... See what else he sent me uh, a lot more expensive order. And some of the cards I was really impressed with. In fact, some of them I already sent off the trolling too. Dang it! So I'm not gonna be able to show them all to you. But like here's a reverse holo from Expeditions Gym at 10 Blastoise. I think I already got one, so I'll probably sell that one. Got some CD promos. There's the Charizards. Both of them nines. Then we got some Top Sun. Venus in a 10. He had actually sold me a 9 recently, and he said that he thought it was in really good condition. That it's possible that that would go back as a 10, so I may regrade that. I just got, I've got to look at it myself. Maybe he said he might not. It might not have gotten a 10 um, because of you know, sometimes when you send a bunch of cards in that are really perfect, not all of them are going to get 10. They're going to see something that's slightly different off of another one, but it, it could be a really strong 9 that regrades. I rarely ever regrade. I don't usually suggest it for 9s, but sometimes I do, especially if it's super high end, and it looks like it could have easily gotten a 10. 
There's a nice Charizard. I've been sitting back three of every Charizard. So I don't think I've got three of that one. I don't even know what that come from. It's got a pretty cool artwork. It's just something in, on the Japanese side, I guess. These are the ones I was most interested in. This Slow King Gem at 10 from Southern Islands and this Ladybug. I paid up a little bit on these. He didn't really argue with me on price at all. Probably because I paid higher than the most recent sales in my quote for those instead of a normal margin where, I, like that hair cross where I paid like five bucks for it because I knew it was going to be super slow to sell. I mean, that hair cross, like, I would probably ask $15, 20 for it or something like that. But I don't expect to sell fast, and you got to factor in shipping and different things. Got the Piplup. I think the 10s on a lot of those. Japanese Watsi Hollows are, I mean, they're like 20, 30 bucks. It's crazy what you have to compete with. Some of them are more expensive. This one, I think, got a six because on that top side up there. But I think that was it. That was like the only thing I could see on it. Usually, if they see some kind of indent, like it's going to drop to a five automatically. But since that one went so heavy, maybe it was a, maybe it was a nine. This is just a little bit random display of PSA cards. Maybe I can push some of this stuff back. Yeah. I don't want to straighten it out too much. Uh, next up, in fact, I'm going to back up just a little bit so you guys can see a little better. I'm not going to show it to you. I'm just going to show you what it is. It's a No, dam no Damage Nine Tails deck. And it has been opened. It has all the contents. But it's got the sealed deck with No Damage Nine Tails on top. I bought it for $1,500, probably a crazy price to pay for this, but I saw it and it was like, you know what, I haven't seen one of these available for me to purchase in 10 plus years of collecting and watching on eBay, so I'm going to go ahead and buy it. And if you want to see a picture of it, I have a link to my Instagram down there in the description. I have posted a picture there. You guys can go check that out. It's really cool. It's legit. You know, I called PSA out on, hey, is this proof enough? And, but we'll just see. I, I'm just glad to have it in my collection. Next up, I have. Oh, in fact, I forgot a note for one of these. I think it was the jungle or the fossil. Oh no, this is the one from Pokemon Radar. You can see where I paid seventy-two hundred dollars for that base set one. Thank you, Rusty TCA. Appreciate the business and keep up the quality YouTube content. Pokemon Radar. I try to keep little notes like that. But next up, definitely not least, from Matthew Chump. Well. I don't know if he wants to say his last name, so I'm not going to say it. It's uh, Mr. 1T. He actually sent me some stuff to open up on the channel. Uh, I think, Well, I think these are cards and these are packs to open up. So he says, open first on this one. We'll do that. Kind of cool. He uh, hid whatever it was in there. Let's see which side pops open. Is this the thing bag? Let me rip it. All right. Do it like this. So that's the back card. So we'll start with this first one. Morty Full Art. Check that out. Pretty cool. What is that? Unbroken Bonds. I think that's what it is. Next up. So we start off with Full Art. That's really cool. Arceus. And this is the Japanese version. These were, there was nine of them, I believe. All of them were technically like secret rares, AR1 through AR9. I'm not sure how it worked out on the Japanese side. Sometimes their secret rares are like even more rare than the US side, but I'm not completely sure. It is first edition. They usually have like these small first edition stamps. Sometimes they're really hard to see. He does have a YouTube channel, guys. So if you guys haven't looked in the top right hand corner, I should have a little card there that takes you to his channel. And down there in the description, there should be you know, a link to his YouTube channel. So go check that out. Oh, sweet. Man, I really like the Charizard EX from Flashfire. Some of you who have seen my returns know that I have like 100 of these things that I've graded. I've got a few 10s, mostly 7s, 8s, and 9s. But. I don't even know what the price on this card is. Like I was, I used to like just mass quantity buy them at twenty dollars a piece. They're really tough to get in minty shape. This one looks really nice, actually. Probably one of the better ones that I've seen. Like you can find a few white dots, but really, that's a very, very nice Charizard EX from Flashfire. And this was technically the very first full art Charizard put out the second series of X and Y and Flashfire. Next up, well the very first English Full Art Charizard, I'm not sure on the Japanese side. 
Jirachi. This is the Make a Wish Jirachi from Hidden Legends. Pretty sure a lot of people use this card in decks for a while. I may be thinking of a different one, but mainly for this card right here. Search your deck for a card that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it on that Pokemon. If you do, put one damage counter on Jirachi. Shuffle your deck out afterwards. I, th I guess it was just really powerful because you could actually take that card and go ahead and evolve it, not stick it in your hand or something like that. I know people use the Alolan Vulpix for its beacon. And the last single is another Charizard. Check that out. And it's the uh, Platinum Arceus on our side. I'm not sure what it is on their side. We can beat Frontier or something, maybe. I, com I could have completely missed that. I just know that it's... <clears throat> or actually, it's Supreme Victors. I messed it up on the English side. Pretty sure it's the Supreme Victors one. I don't have... Uh, this is like a really tough set on the English side to get in PSA 10. But man, really cool. You hit the nail on the head with some of the cards that I like there. First edition Charizard. Always... Always oh, cool to tab. Now, <clears throat> let's see what he sent. Looks like he sent four packs, at least one Japanese. Then we got one Mysterious Treasures, and ooh, we got two Mysterious Treasures. Uh oh, and then we got one of the E Minimum packs. And I'm gonna open up probably that one last. I think, I think I know what that is. I think that's where you can get like the holographic Pikachu and the Charmander, or you've got shots at those cards and stuff. So let's see. I'm gonna open up this one first. Probably out of the four, I would like it the least, but they're all really cool. Out of print, this is black and white Noble Victories. I think it's red collection on the Japanese side. And thank you so much, Mr. One T, Matthew. And I guess they call him that because they spell his name Matthew with one T. It's not M A T T H E W. It's just M A T H E W. All right, so we have Axu. I don't even remember what that is. A dragon? No. Jane? I'm not even sure what that is. I can't remember what it is. Koba Lion. So we did get us a hollow. Then we got, was that Drillbur or Tro or the one above it? And then some others like Dome Fossil or something or some, some Helix Fossil or not, not even really sure. It looks like a, a Spear Fossil looking at the card. Generation 5 is one of my weakest like knowledge bases of like the, the Pokemon themselves because I didn't deal too much in retail so I didn't see many of the cards and it was after I had really collected three packs to go. So this uh we'll grab this one. This one wasn't on the front. We'll go come back more for the next. I think from what we did this is ten additional game cards. We did the third and fourth card off of the back. If I remember right, three and four. So we got Vulpix, Barboach, Slackoth, Chikorita, Geodude. It's definitely not the third and fourth. How many cards is that? So that's the third card from the back, and we took. So it's like the fifth card off of the back. So that one right there is probably the hollow or the rare. So we got Bayleaf, Dusk Ball, Metal Energy. So we definitely have three. This should be an uncommon. Magmar. And then... Oh, we got us a holo. Check it out. Alakazam. Does it... Well, it does have the bleed error. You, I think you can kind of see it down in here. It's not as... It's not super prevalent, but it's definitely there. Almost all the hollows from Secret or Mysterious Treasures have that issue where the holo runs through on the rest of the card. And a lot of people like it because it, it just makes it look that much more sparkly. Man, very cool pool. Sorry I don't have cases sitting right here. Maybe I'll take this Entei out. Stick the Alakazam in it. Diamond and Pearl singles are pretty underrated for like the hollows. Because I mean packs are so ex are getting so expensive but the hollows are still really really cheap. I may start having to grade those. Alright. Got another mysterious treasure pack. Oh, try turning around. One, two, three. So there's the back two. So that'll probably be the reverse hollow and then the rare or the hollow. Got us an Apom, Paris, Spiel, Surskit, Bronzor, Capini, Nidorina, Graveler. And for the reverse hollow, we have Aaron. 
Pretty cool, pretty cool. These are so hard to get in mint condition. And then we have us a multi-energy for the rare. Turn that around, kind of uh, lackadaisical. And I feel like I could have been a little bit more suspenseful with that one. But the Alakazam definitely beats it out. So I don't know how many... It feels like there's only one card in here. Yeah, it feels like one card. We'll just have to see what what it is. I don't think I've ever opened one of these. So thank you, Mr. 1T. Turn it around. Alright. So I did that part right. Let's go ahead and sleeve it. Just in case it's a hollow. And we have... Whooper. Pretty cool. Number 22P. Most of these promos, people like to grade... I'll probably grade this one. I mean, I imagine it looks really good. Man, thanks so much for all the free stuff and the packs to open up. Got us a cool Alakazam. That was probably one of the the few Alakazams printed during Diamond and Pearl. Most of you know that we Pokemon doesn't print any more Kadabras, so Alakazam is kind of tricky to print. A lot of times you got to do like an Alakazam EX card or something where it doesn't evolve from Kadabra. Because normally if you print a card, it needs to be playable. But thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I had a lot of fun opening those up. And I hope you enjoyed some of the things that I showed you that I purchased. I didn't show everything. And I know I didn't show the no damage, no nine tails. But you guys can go check out that photo on Instagram if you want to do that. Don't forget to go check out Mr. 1T. Go give him a sub. Go check out some of his videos. See what it's like. Encourage him. That's what this community is about.